Worship for Sunday, April the 11th, 2021, the second Sunday of Easter. The Easter season is a week of weeks, seven Sundays when we play in the mystery of Christ's presence, mostly through the glorious Gospel of John. Today we gather with the disciples on the first Easter, and Jesus breathes the Spirit on us. With Thomas, we ask for a sign, and Jesus offers us his wounded self in the broken bread. From frightened individuals, we are transformed into a community of open doors, peace, forgiveness, and material sharing such that no one among us is in need. The Lord be with you. As we gather to worship in various places, may we be blessed by God who forms us in word, sacrament, and community. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Stephen Weber from St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cambridge, Ontario, and I'm glad to have you join us for worship today. Thank you to our Minister of Music, Katrina Lowe, for playing a prelude and postlude for us today, as well as the musical portions of the Communion Liturgy. And thank you to our soloist, Karen Azarot. Thank you to Tim Weber for videotaping portions of today's worship. If you haven't yet prepared the elements such as bread and wine for communion, you might want to pause this video and make them ready now. In these challenging and unforeseeable times, if you find that you need someone to talk to or if you need any assistance, please email me or phone me at the church office and I will help you. At whatever time and location you are accessing this, thank you for doing so. It is good to be together in whatever way possible in this time of physical distancing. We continue now with worship. I greet you with the ancient Easter greeting. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, with joy we celebrate the day of our Lord's resurrection. By the grace of Christ among us, enable us to show the power of the resurrection in all that we say and do. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Children's Time, Scars of Love. I'm so very glad you're, that you're here today, and I know that you're bringing sunshine and joy wherever you are. And I can't wait until we're able to be back together again for in-person worship. Today's Bible story takes place on the very first Easter evening. The disciples knew that Jesus had died and they thought that was it. But Jesus has come back to life. When he meets up with his disciples, boy, are they surprised to see him. Another surprising thing is that after his resurrection, when Jesus comes back to life, he still has the scars from where he was nailed to the cross. Does anyone know how to make this sign for Jesus in sign language? You hold up your left palm and using the middle finger of your other hand, you point to the center of your palm. And then you do the same thing with your right hand and the middle finger of your left hand, point again to the, saw, to the palm. In sign language, the sign is pointing to the scars that Jesus had on his hands. Jesus got those nail marks when he was crucified. And so those wounds are really marks of love because Jesus died in love. When a disciple by the name of Thomas saw those scars, those marks of love left from being nailed to the cross, Thomas knew that it was Jesus. Whenever we see scars of love, we know that Jesus is there helping us to love. Now I invite you to move into your favorite prayer posture. It may be hands open facing up to receive the gift of God's presence in prayer. It may be hands folded and eyes closed to help you concentrate. Or it may be crossing your arms across your chest to form an X, the first letter of Christ in Greek, and it feels like a hug from God. Now let us pray. Dear God, thank you for sending Jesus to show us your great love. Help us to see your love all around us and help us to show your love as Jesus did. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Your parents have children's bulletins for you that you're welcome to work on at any time, even while you're listening to the sermon.
the believer's common life. When the apostles testified to others about the resurrection of Jesus, the early Christian community shared what they owned or sold their possessions to help their fellow believers who were in need. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Word of God. Word of life. Our synodical bishop, Michael Price, in great kindness and caring, has written a sermon for use today in churches across our Eastern Synod. He brings us words of challenge, comfort, and blessing, and his wisdom is much appreciated. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. 
So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Dear friends in Christ, it's a privilege to be with you as a part of this morning's worship and to be able to give your dear pastor some much welcome relief. Our rostered ministers have been doing such a wonderful job over the course of this past year, but it's hard work and we need to do everything we can to give them our encouragement and our support. Today's Gospel lesson raises questions that cut to the very heart of what it means to experience Christ's presence. Questions that cut to the very heart of what it means to say the words, I believe. We witness the gathering of the disciples on Easter night and we can't help but asking if some very basic questions about the nature of belief. How is it that you believe, or disbelieve for that matter? Who can you believe? How much proof do you need before you can say that you believe something? And how certain does your belief have to be before you can say that you really believe? I need to tell you that I think poor old Thomas has received a bit of a bum rap by many Christians over time. Yes, he had doubts and questions. But we don't know that he had any more doubts than the other disciples would have had given the same circumstances. He certainly had no more doubt than I would have had. Remember, the others had already seen Jesus. Thomas hadn't. All he had to go on was the strength of the disciples' witness. And obviously it wasn't all that convincing. If Christ were indeed raised, why were they being so fearful? Thomas didn't doubt the Lord. He did, however, fail to be inspired or convinced by the witness of his colleagues who claimed that the Lord was risen, but were still hiding behind closed doors. I find it really interesting that while the Western Christian world typically speaks of Thomas as doubting Thomas, the Orthodox Church of the East calls him Believing Thomas, in reference to his exclamation, My Lord and my God, after having seen Christ and touched his wounds. Isn't that something? They choose to honor his exclamation of faith rather than his quite understandable and temporary expression of doubt. Furthermore, Jesus honored Thomas's questioning in a very special way. Think about it for a moment. He came back a week later, just for Thomas. He'd already visited the others. He returned just for Thomas and said, Peace be with you. Touch my hands. Touch my side. See and believe. Friends, never, never, never be ashamed of your doubts and questions. 
And let's be honest, if you don't have any doubts or questions, you are either fooling yourself or you are spiritually asleep. Frederick Buechner tells us that doubts are the ants in the pants of faith. They keep it awake and moving. And remember, there is often more faith expressed in an honest doubt or question than in many of the pious platitudes that all too easily cross our lips. In fact, I would maintain that doubt, in many ways, is a precondition of faith. The disciples of old could not reveal Christ while they remained safe and comfortable behind closed doors. Their witness couldn't even convince Thomas, one of their own number. And neither will the church's witness today convince modern-day Thomases so long as we remain in a similar posture, hidden away, seemingly safe and secure behind closed doors. Those who are seeking a new experience of the Christian life will not be easily drawn to churches that blithely assume the fact of their own relevance or give all too easy answers. People seeking a deeper experience of theological inquiry will struggle to maintain connections with faith communities that are intolerant of their questioning. We need to follow Jesus' example and open ourselves to the honest questioning, to the touch of those who come seeking a new truth. And we need to equip ourselves with the tools needed to engage in mature but robust theological reflection. Confident in the knowledge that our faith tradition is robust and strong enough to bear the weight of our critical self-reflection. Indeed, if that faith tradition is to carry any real authority beyond that of mere lip service, such reflection is of absolute necessity. The story is told of a student who asked his teacher about the nature of faith. And the teacher told her about a dog who scared up a rabbit and began to chase it. Soon other dogs heard the barking and they joined in the chase. But slowly they began to drop out one by one until only the first dog was left. What does this tell me about true faith? The student asked. And the teacher explained that the first dog stayed in the chase because it had seen the rabbit. And for us to maintain a deep and abiding faith, it is necessary for us to have seen and experienced the risen Lord. Most churches today claim to be very concerned, and rightly so, about questions of evangelism and outreach. And my guess is that the church can do all sorts of things to try and bring people into our buildings. It can put on a kinder, friendlier face. It can use gimmicks, frills, and tricks. Most of us have learned that threats no longer work, if they ever did. But friends, unless the church provides people with a living experience of the risen Christ, all of its efforts will be for naught. The hounds might follow for a while to see what all the barking's about, but they will not stay in the chase because they will not have seen the rabbit. And why should they? An old saying tells us that ships that remain in the harbor are safe ships. But we need to remember that that isn't what ships are made for. And the same is true for the ship that is the church. It can remain safe and comfortable in the harbor. Its disciples can remain safe, locked away behind closed doors. But that's not what this ship has been made for. And that is not what disciples are made for. A spiritually hungry world is pleading Show us your wounds. They are looking to see where God is to be found today. Those who are searching are looking for a body of believers that resembles Christ's body. A church that is visibly following him in the way of the cross. And unless we are serious about providing that kind of witness, 
and all our busy chit chat about evangelism and outreach is really just a lot of empty talk. We are currently celebrating the season of Easter, the holy season of resurrection and new life. It's an opportune time for us to take a good hard look at the witness we are providing, for us to reclaim our place in the pack and dedicate ourselves anew to running the chase of our lives, following Jesus the Christ, our resurrected Lord. It's an opportune time for us to join with Thomas in his great confession, my Lord and my God. An opportune time for us to invite others to join us in that confession by revealing the crucified and risen Christ to them in our words, but especially in our actions and in our choices. May God help us to be faithful in that task. And may God bless the work that you do as a people of God called to witness to the gospel of Jesus Christ in your home communities. And may God bless the work that we do together as a wider church community called to show in thought, word, and deed that the Lord is risen, that he is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alive in the risen Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit, we bring our prayers before God, who promises to hear us and to answer in steadfast love. We pray, saying, Hear us, O God, and responding, Your love is great. You shower your church with grace, O God. Unite the whole church on earth, so that with one heart it testifies to the resurrection of Jesus Christ with power and love. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. 
You proclaim the blessing of life forevermore. Like dew upon the mountains, refresh your creation. Restore waters, cleanse the air, and provide revitalizing moisture to parched land. Give your whole creation the promise of new life. Move us to care for the poor who are hurt by global climate change. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. You direct the nations, O God. Guide all in authority, that they shepherd their peoples in the ways of your love. Defeat in us our impulse to war. Bestow the peace of Christ upon those in authority, and breathe upon them the Holy Spirit. Give insight and discernment to the jurors of the George Floyd murder trial, so that justice will be done. Hear us, O God. Your love is great. You place within the heart of the church a spirit of sharing. Give us the power of your generous spirit that we provide for the needs of others, especially those who are homeless in Cambridge. Announce your peace to those who are lonely, hurting, suffering, or afraid. We pray especially for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth and her family as they grieve the death of Prince Philip. And we also pray for those whom we name before you. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You give us the wonderful gift of fellowship with one another in this faith community, St. Paul's. Shine the light of the risen Christ in our life together, so that we live in love for one another and that we show your love to the world. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You call us to care for all people. As our municipal government considers the location of a new consumption and treatment site for Cambridge, create timely and caring decisions that foster the common good, save lives, and recognize your love for each and every one of us. Bless the work of all who help in providing vaccines. Keep our frontline workers safe and give them much needed rest. Move us each to do our own part in following the guidance of our public health authorities so that our health system does not become overwhelmed. Hear us, O God, your love is great. You share the gift of eternal life. In thanksgiving and remembrance, we recall the lives and gifts of those who now live in endless joy, especially Philip. Unite us with them in the resurrection of hope. Hear us, O God, your love is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. We share that peace. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world. For the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. to give you thanks and praise, O God, for you have raised Jesus from the dead and swallowed up death forever. You made the world and all that is in it. You made this day, and we will be glad and rejoice in it. For this is the day your prophets testified about when you destroy the shroud of death and open the gates of salvation. You sent your Son, Jesus, among us, anointed with your Holy Spirit and power to preach peace and heal all who were oppressed. When he was put to death and buried, 
you opened the tomb and raised him on this day. Now we need never again search for him in the places of buried dreams, for he is alive and reaches out to us, walking with us and going ahead of us. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Gracious Father, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light and life. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age, the promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the words of the prophet, and at this, the end of all the ages, the gift of your Son, who proclaimed the good news in word and deed, and was obedient to your will, even to giving his life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Therefore, with this bread and cup, we remember the life our Lord offered for us. And believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the great and promised feast. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, that all who share in Christ's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in light. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place. And unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now we are bold to pray. Christ invites us to his table. Come, eat, and be satisfied.
Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring joy to the hearts of all people. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the promise of the empty tomb, the joy of Mary in the garden, the renewed belief of Thomas, the eagerness of the disciples returning from Emmaus, the love of Peter told three times, and the peace of the risen Christ be with you this Easter, and the blessing of God be with you and all those you love this day and every day. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia.